May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. that there is any topic more complicated than forgiveness. As soon as we start unpacking it, uh, that we discover that there are many angles um, from which we can approach it. I forgive you, you forgive me, you receive my forgiveness, I receive your forgiveness. I struggle with forgiving another person, uh, that person comes to ask for my forgiveness, I ask for forgiveness, someone is unable to forgive me. I cannot receive someone else's forgiveness. There are so many different angles that we can quickly descend down the rabbit hole and get lost in nailing down the semantics and miss the overarching message of the gospel. So I want to approach this in a different way. There is a beautiful piece of music that we have heard here at Epiphany by the composer Bruckner. Am I saying that right? Uh, the words are simple, they're in Latin, so I'm not going to read you the Latin because I'm, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce it, but um, I will give you the translation in English. It's three lines. This place was made by God, a priceless sacrament. It is without reproach. One more time. This place was made by God, a priceless sacrament. It is without reproach. Now this piece of music is often used um, in dedication of space for obvious reasons. This place is made by God, um, a priceless sacrament. In other words, an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. The place itself becomes a sign and a symbol of God's grace. But the dedication of a building only has meaning when that building is filled with a community of people. The Church of the Epiphany is not the building that we are gathered in. This is our worship space, and it is holy for us because it is the place where we encounter God. It is truly made by God. It is God's handiwork, not because God designed the building, but because God has designed this community. God called each and every one of us to be part of the life and worship here. It is by God's design that we experience this priceless sacrament of Christian community, a place where the outward and visible presence of community directs our attention to the inward and spiritual grace we receive from being part of this church. It is a gathering place, a place to practice our faith with others on the journey. Now, sometimes we fail. Sometimes we do really dumb things. We are certainly guaranteed to hurt each other, and to not always like what is going on. But there is a commitment to community that undergirds all of this, a commitment to a life lived in relationship with God. There is a commitment to practice our faith, not be perfect, because that's not possible, but to practice our faith. So keep this in mind, and let's return to the gospel, to this topic of forgiveness. When you know that you, as a member of the church, are part of God's handiwork in designing this church, this community, then you know that you belong. And you do belong. Every one of you belong here. There is no longer any need to be perfect. You do not have to have the perfect faith. You do not have to know everything there is to know about God and about Jesus, and about the creeds of the church. You belong simply and profoundly because you are part of God's handiwork in designing this church, just as you are. Knowing this, I mean really knowing it, is both humbling and free. Humbling because it's humbling to know that God chose you to be part of something bigger than you. And free, because there is freedom in belonging, in knowing that this is where you belong, no matter where you are on your journey of faith. Forgiveness, then, is not such a stretch anymore. 
It is no longer a trip down the rabbit hole of giving and receiving, asking and responding. It's just a given part of what it means to be a member of this community, to be practicing our faith. We forgive as we have been forgiven. We love as we have been loved. We extend the grace that we have received by being a place of grace for others. This summer, while I was at camp, I had the opportunity to work with uh, the kids on creating uh, the end of the session Eucharist. And my colleague, John, another priest, uh, he and I visited each uh, adventure group. There are about seven adventure groups for each camp session, so we visited each adventure group and talk to the kids about the various parts of the Eucharist. One group decided they wanted to do the peace, and John spoke to them about what the peace means. He explained that when we live in community, we are bound to get into tangles with one another. We will not always get along. We will not always see eye to eye. And nobody knows us better than a bunch of kids at camp, let me tell you. But when we come to the table, we want to be free and clear of anything inside of us and in relationship with others that keeps us tied up in knots. And that's what the peace is for. John said sometimes there isn't really any need to discuss what's been going on. Sometimes it's as easy as looking the person in the eye and blessing them with God's peace, a sincere blessing from the heart. When we know ourselves as belonging, as part of this priceless sacrament that is made by God and with love, forgiving each other and receiving forgiveness is a natural outpouring of the grace that we have already received. Right now, our community is in the process of a little redesign. We have said goodbye to several families this year, including a few staff members and our associate priest. And today we send off Brian Driscoll, our director of music for the last nine years, and his partner Jamie. And we welcome Jay Wilcox um, and his wife Carrie, as uh, Jay is our new director of music. Our community is shifting and changing, but it is still the handiwork of God. While jobs change and people change and life goes on, their place in this community is forever. The impact they have made on our lives and on this place will go on. This is the outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual grace of community. It is made by God, a priceless sacrament, and it is eternal. 